Hi, I'm Rochelle from Originally Worn, and today I'm working on a client's kitchen where I'm combining Annie Sloan and General Finish products to create her, her kitchen cabinets. This video will go through the process from start to finish as I'm working on these over the next few days. Hope you enjoy. These are the kitchen cabinet doors that I am redoing for my client's home. Um, they've been taken down and they've actually had um, new holes bored. You can see that up close there for soft close hinges. Um, I brought them to my local carpentry cabinetry company and uh, they were able to do that. So not only do they get new cabinets, but they get the modern wonderment of soft close hinges with their custom cabinetry from 20 years ago. So that's quite the update. Um, so to prep these cabinets, I have taken them and I have given them a very light sand. You can see that they're still shiny even um, with us uh, electric sander. This is totally not necessary. Um, I'm just kind of a lazy cleaner and it's more likely that I will kind of get the grime off with a quick sand than it will be for me to clean them. Um, but that's totally up to you. I also work in a workshop and I don't have to work in a home and make a bunch of messes. So I can see where if you're in your own home, you don't want to run that sander inside. So if you do take your doors down, be sure to label um, where they go. And if you're going to use the same hinges, be sure to label what door that hinge came off and whether it came off the top or the bottom. That way every hinge goes back on every door in the same exact spot because over the years they kind of get warped and they kind of, um, you know, bend a little bit and you don't want to mix them up because your whole kitchen will kind of end up looking wonky. So I've, I've given this light sand, of course, any holes, um, defects, anything like that that needed to be fixed, um, had been fixed before I sanded it. And then I did wash it down quickly with a uh, mixture of a glug of vinegar, warm water, and a couple drops of dish soap. If you put, if you need to clean them off more and you need to use more cleaning product, be sure to rinse that cleaning product off really well also. Um, there's a little piece of fuzz in here that I keep picking off. I don't know why that is. Anyway, uh, <laughs> I have like a squirrel distraction. Anyway, uh, so once your cabinets are down, they're, they're clean, they're sanded if you want to do them, then you can start painting. And we're going to do this kitchen with Annie Sloan French Linen. Um, it's one of my most favorite colors, especially in the neutral world of uh, kitchens. It's my favorite. Uh, it's got a little bit of, there's a kind of color on the can. It's a gray, but it's not a blue gray. I'm not a big, huge blue gray fan. Um, I'm not really a tan fan either. So it's kind of uh, marks the line of both of them, which is why I love it. So typically when I paint, I will paint um, into a container, usually an old cottage cheese container because I seem to have a million of those laying around. Uh, you don't want to paint directly out of your can because what will end up is that this stuff will all kind of get dried and as you're using that can up, it kind of gets dried and crusty. But for the purpose of this, I'm going to use it right out of the can. You're also going to need one of these big majestic round Annie Sloan brushes. Uh, this is the large one. This is what I use on cabinetry even when I'm going for the smooth finish because as you'll see, it allows no goops to kind of get in the corner here. And of course the large one does it faster because it covers more area. So that's why I love that one. Um, it's pretty simple. I'm gonna quick stir up my can here because I haven't even done that yet today. They give a couple swirls on it. It's not like a traditional uh, latex paint that you would buy at a regular store like that, that you can see the color separate, but you still need to give it a couple good stirs just to get all the goodies kind of put out through the through the paint. So, got that and got mine and I'm literally just gonna go to town on there, get some paint on that brush. And I like to start in my crevices of the door and these big round brushes, see how I can just like kind of, I haven't even got more paint on my brush yet. The first coat, um, I kind of like to be thinner just because I feel like it kind of 
I don't know, works better. That could be a total myth. That's just what I usually do is a thinner first coat. It doesn't hurt anything, that's for sure. And these big, beautiful brushes, you can see how they just kind of cover areas. And of course this paint goes really far. So I'm just putting a little bit on my brush at a time because I don't want to put a huge big goober pile there. And you can do this whole process with your cabinet door attached still um, and paint right over the hinges. A lot of people do that. Heck, I just did that in my mom's kitchen. It looks fabulous. So you can see now that I have this inner part kind of cleaned out, there's no goopies in any of the edges, the ridges. Because I didn't use too much paint, I don't need to go back with a secondary brush and clean this out or anything like that. It's all soaked up in this big, wonderful round brush, hence why they're so stinking amazing. So then on the flat surfaces, I'm gonna get a little bit more paint because you can just kind of spread it all around. And even though I am using this textured brush that kind of is meant usually for, for um, more paint strokes being seen, if you kind of uh, work it the direction of the grain, it, it does smooth out enough. It doesn't, um, I really don't like a flat brush, I guess. You can, uh, even Annie Sloan makes a really wonderful big flat brush. Um, there's Pretty makes really wonderful big flat brushes. I mean, this, those aren't um, as uncommon as this world of these majestic round brushes. But you can see how it kind of gets into that oat grain. You know, there's no problem with it working it in there like that because the more it can kind of get in there, the better coverage it's gonna be. So that's that guy so far. And then to do your, your kind of your edges, I like to go with whatever's the shorter of the wood grain. So usually on cabinets, it's your top and your bottom piece. I will do those first. So I'll come, cause you like to, I mean, you should paint in the direction of your wood grain. I mean, you might not hurt anything if you don't, but that's just <laughs> what I've always done and been told. And I kind of lift it up here and get the sides. Again, this is your first coat, so it's pretty light on there. And now I'm gonna try, I'm gonna hope not to like go back over this area that I've already done. Because if you do that, it, kind of, it dries fast. And if you go over it while it's kind of tacky but not dry, it can get rather kind of goopy. Um, you can always wet your brush if you're finding that this is too fast of a process for you. Um, I wouldn't recommend watering it down just because then it takes the kind of the strength away from it. But if you do, water it down in a separate container, not in your uh, quart of any slim paint because it'll smell after a while. Like, you know, you close that paint up and you come back a year later, it's gonna stink. So you see now I've done those kind of two edges there and kind of check the sides here. Good to go over the side so you don't have goopy droopies. Let's see if I can pull this guy back, if I can get right here for you. And then where you've already went over, you'll kind of see how your brush will mimic the cut of the line of where the door is actually built together. And that works just fine. And so it kind of looks more natural. And then I'll do the same on this side. My paint can's on the wrong side, apparently. And there you have it. One coat will be done on this side. Um, I'll actually put this door aside and go along and I'm gonna go and, I have a whole kitchen to do with this, so I'm gonna go along and do the rest of them and I'll be back to put a second coat on with you when these dry. And you can see kind of, I keep keep messing with it, but you don't really need to. Um, you can kind of look at it and see, I, mean, I probably shouldn't have went over that yet. There's a little hair. These natural brushes kind of do that a little bit. But there we have the first coat of French linen on there. It is not full and that's okay. That's what it's supposed to be. I might spin this guy around a minute and usually when I paint these, I paint them up on um, 
these either cabinet little holder things I have or um, on leftover cans of anti slum paint. I hold them up on there. There you go. So I'll be back in a minute. So I've painted the front and the back with one coat of my Annie Sloan French linen. And now I'm gonna go back and do the front again and the back again. So now I've done two coats of French linen on the top and on the back of everything. So when you're finished doing uh, whatever paint you're gonna do on your piece, then it's time to top coat it. And I'm gonna be using uh, General Finishes High Performance Top Coat in flat. I really like this. Um, it seems to go on a lot better than, a, than uh, what you would refer to as a typical poly um, and it has a nice sheen. The flat still does have a sheen to it. It's not matte matte. Um, they do make a brand called Flat Out Flat, which is like completely matte like waxes, but it's not recommended for tabletops or for kitchen cabinets, which is usually when I use the general finishes. So what you do with it is you don't want to shake it, but you do want to stir it. The more uh, flat you're using, so if you're doing a flat, a satin, uh, compared to a semi-gloss or a gloss, the flatter the sheen, the more the flattening agent in it kind of needs to be stirred up. So I open her up and I'm gonna give them a stir, but never a shake because you don't wanna add all those extra bubbles in to your top coat. And then you're gonna have two different brushes for it. This is actually um, your typical kind of flat, <clears throat> one of those foam brushes, uh, a poly foam brush, but this is a better quality one. They do make different quality of these ones. So try not to get the absolute cheapest version of this black brush. And then this is your cheapest uh, chip brush. I can use, I'm gonna use this right now today to show you that you can do it with this. I usually do this step with an actual poly brush um, sometimes I skip the foam brush and do the poly brush all together. So whatever works for you. Your first coat is going to go on a kind of a little bit like draggier because the chalk paint is soaking it up. Um, then your second and third coat, but try not to overlap it a lot. And I'm going to start kind of... Eh, let's go with your edges here, although I goobed a big thing. Oops, and I have something in my can. So I'm gonna try to go along and get some in there, but not over brush it a ton. And this stuff does dry fast. And then you kinda wanna go back and while you have a second brush, it's almost like you dry brush out the excess. So you kind of take a, a, a cleaner, a drier brush and spread that around a little bit and then move on. So I will try not to go back to those areas that I just touched. So you keep kind of getting some in there. And uh, people apply this in different ways. I've seen people apply it with rags too. Technically, uh, this way, the method that I'm showing you is how General Finishes says to apply it. So everyone can do their own thing, whatever they want. I'm just going with what the manufacturer recommends. So you kind of brush out that. We'll keep going around here. I won't make you watch me do all the layers of this. I'll probably fast forward through all that. Um, you are gonna wanna do three top coat layers. I'm gonna actually do a glaze in between layers um, 
one and two. So our next step here is gonna be a glaze. So I will show you that. But if you're not gonna do a glaze, you wait till this is good and dry, and then you can keep going here. You do need a sand, which I'll show you that too here. So, you know, you get kind of these build up areas of excess. That's where this other second brush kind of comes in. Because your one brush is full. And so you can't really get it to come out well. And you will lightly sand in between every layer. So, you know, so once in a while, if something does happen, you can sand it back out. But of course, we're trying to avoid that if, you know, anything happening in your top coat. Like see there's a little hair that'll probably sand out but you know if we can avoid that that'd be better so then on these flat surfaces you try to do kind of sweeping big brush strokes oops i got a hair and you can overlap them slightly i'd say about oh 25 30 percent overlap and you want to have a good amount of product on there to move around. You're not trying to like make it as thin as possible, but you're also trying to get anything that kind of looks like white gone. So now I'm going to go back quick with my dry brush brush here and just kind of smooth it out a little bit more. This kind of um, any areas that have a little bit more than that should, it kind of helps suck those up. And you'll be able to kind of see where this is too. Kind of got all that done. So I'll tip it now that these kind of areas are done. And see here the center is done. I have a little bit of hair in that. That's no good. There, go back. And now I'll go around all the outer edges too. And let it dry. Um, and then flip it and do the other side. And then I'll be back to show you how to do the glaze. So now we're ready to do the glazing process. And I did a close up video for you in this. You can really see, cause we're just gonna get just into that with a very little bit of stuff. Uh, we're gonna be using Van Dyke Brown in General Finishes Glaze Effects. And then we're also gonna need their um, extender. And the reason being is that the extender helps this stuff get moved around longer. Otherwise this dries out really fast. Uh, so I'm gonna put a little bit of it on a plastic ice cream pail lid here, just cause I don't like to use paper stuff to put the stuff on. And um, I feel like plastic doesn't soak it up and, and it doesn't mush it and meld it. So I do have, remember one coat of your, my um, high performance top coat on here. And I'm gonna want that one coat on there because that allows the glaze not to soak into the paint instantly. So I'm gonna put a little bit of an extender here on my tray. And I'm just gonna get my brush wet in it. I'm just using kind of a crappy chip brush here cause I'm gonna throw it away. Um, and normally I'd put the Van Dyke Brown there too, but at this moment, I'm still in the midst of painting all these and I'm just doing this one door to show you here. So, um, get a little bit of my brown on another part container and go in with it. And I'm gonna kinda just push it in all these crevices. You can kinda start to see it come up. And this is a really, um, you know, solid grain, it's an oat grain, and that just tends to soak things into it. So I'm trying to be really careful not to get it all over. I do want it to get pushed kind of up into this little upper ridge part, but I also don't really want it all on the face at all. I kind of want it up in this second layer. Maybe should have used a better brush. Always a problem. I love my good brushes. They're just kind of lazy sometimes. So I'm getting it kind of up in that secondary little layer on this door. Every door will be different. Every project will be different. 
where you're putting it. You're gonna be want to be like kind of where, you know, dirt would naturally gather over the years. And then you're gonna take, I'm gonna take a blue shop towel. You take any sort of like lint-free rag. And I'm gonna kind of go along. I'm gonna wipe it off the main surface here just to make sure that doesn't dry on there. And then start to go in and take the excess off my edges. And sometimes you can kind of see where there's like a little haze. You take a little bit more extender, you can kind of wipe that clean. I don't know for how long you're really able to do that for, but just a little tip, you might get to sneak in a little extra wipe time there. And really this is not meant to be a perfect kind of look it's it's meant to antique it it's meant to be kind of uh you know it's, it's a glaze so i'm going to tip this up here and see if you can kind of see it in the bottom there it's just a wee wee bit of little brown in those edges just a little bit of antiquing um some people would do it you know all over and it would get in the grain or they could do it on the edges that's totally fine. Um, this particular person, it's just going in these very little edges. So, Once your glaze is dry, you can go ahead and go on to the next step. You're going to lightly sand both sides. And whether you put the glaze or not, this is still basically the next step after your first layer of top coat, then you'll lightly sand. So this is a 220 Ultra Flex sanding pad. Um, it's bendable, it's kind of like a sponge. It's pretty stinking awesome. This is the, I love this for this situation um, of sanding, but you can also use a piece of sandpaper, but don't use 220 then. Um, I think you use 320 or 420 grit then. This is actually pretty smooth. It's not very coarse at all. And what you're looking for is a fine powder dust on all your stuff. And you kind of go with the grain a little bit, put slight pressure, but you're not a ton. You're not trying to like take off the top coat. You're just roughing up that top surface. And I know um, myself included is tempted to skip this step because it's a whole nother step. But truly what can happen over time is that your layers will kind of like peel up in sheets if it doesn't have good adhesion to it. So you're gonna put all this work into it. It's worth the time to take the time to sand in between your layers of top coats. So you just go around and hit, hit it a light bit there. You kind of get, oh, you can feel it. It's like butter then all of a sudden. And I'm kind of working with the grain a little bit. Um, not sure if that's necessarily a total requirement. It is when sanding, hey, uh, staining stuff. So I just a habit. I do. And you can see I have this on a Lazy Susan. I had a little video that showed that. It's so you can get to all the parts really easily, you know, clean and move it. That's what I actually, you know, do the whole line. I do them uh, on the Lazy Susan. So you go along and it kind of creates this kind of white powder. This color, it's a little harder to see on there, but you can see it, see it with my fingers there. That's good. Um, you can get in here if you want. I'm mostly worried about big flat surfaces, but I don't know why. So then I'm wiping it off with a blue lip free shop towel. Um, tack cloth would work really great. Some people like to have a slightly dampened cloth to really get it um, off there to make sure there's no extra dust residue. And then I'm gonna flip it and do the exact, you saw that I did the edges and I'm gonna do the exact same to the back that we have just a layer of top coat on too. Now we had no glaze back here and we actually just had the glaze in a little bit of a corner, but even if you had full glaze all over the whole thing, it'd still be the same steps. So now that we've got that guy and we've got them all cleaned off, we'll set our sandpaper aside and we're gonna do the next coat of the, of the top coat. Um, I moved on to the big gallon here because it's what I had for this big project because this is a part of someone's kitchen actually. 
I just happen to be making this video for you while I'm working along. Also why there's days in between and you see my clothes change, my hair, I change it up every day. So I'm just gonna give this a good stir. Remember not to shake your top coat. You don't want air bubbles. And when I get working on this a lot, I will um, actually put this in a separate container. But for right now, we'll just um, go right out of here. So I have a new foam brush because my other one had been all used up by the time I got done with all these cabinets. But that's the wonderment of these brushes. And I'm gonna just get a little bit on there. Your second coat, well, and second and third coat, go on a lot different and a lot better. Um, you know, it's not having to soak into that chalk paint. And so it's a much smoother situation. It glides on a lot different. It's just kind of wonderful. And so let me get it all kind of up in here. Try not to overwork it again, but yet to get it everywhere. And get some in all these edges. And I do have my other little uh, chip brush here to go back with and kind of feather out stuff. I've seen some people do this with a rag, especially on the second and third coats. Um, for this purpose, I thought I'd just keep it the same as to not kind of cause you more something, more things to learn or more techniques. So then you go back just like you did with your first coat, but you'll see it's a whole lot slicker because you're going over another coat of this stuff. And that's exactly what you want. So now I have the center kind of done. And I'm gonna go, and here's the wonderment of the Lazy Susan. You can do that. So yeah, if you can find an old Lazy Susan at a garage sale, or I know I got this one at Ikea for, you know, 10, 15 bucks, really, you know, really inexpensively. And now mine's actually covered with paper because I painted it all cute before I needed it for this purpose. So I'm gonna go along and kind of, you know, smooth that back out with the grain and go along this edge now. And I do periodically stir, whether I have my top coat in a cup or in the, the container that it comes in, I do periodically stir it still. Um, you know, that flat, especially when it's the flat, the flattening agents just tend to sink to the bottom. And of course I want an even sheen across all my doors. I don't want one door to look shinier than a different door. So I just keep it stirring it. Ah, the lazy Susan. Okay. And we're getting close to done on this side. When this side is done, we will um, let it dry for a, a couple hours and then flip it over and do the other side. And I'll be back to sand the top coat with you again and put on our third layer. So here we have our finished door. Um, just to recap, there are two coats of Annie Sloan French linen. Then there is a coat of General Finishes high performance top coat in flat. And then there is their, the General Finishes um, Van Dyke Brown glaze, kind of done in the edges here. You can see it. Then it is lightly sanded with a 220 grit uh, sanding pad all over, another coat of the high performance top coat, sand it again, and then another coat of the high performance top coat. So uh, two coats of paint, three coats of a top coat, two sands and one glaze. Um, so yeah, this method does take uh, quite a bit more work, but in the end, check out these beautiful doors you get here. You can see them. They have a wonderful even sheen all over, a little bit antiquing to them. They just end up with a really beautiful, rich color. Um, and as soon as I get this whole kitchen 
finished and hung back up. There will be pictures of the whole kitchen on our website under the in-home custom section. Um, it should be really, really beautiful. I hope you guys have a great day and be sure to like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel and um, check us out on Facebook. And our website is www.originallywornonline.com. Thanks and happy painting.